topic is called implicit differentiation. All of the differentiation that we've done in this class so far is called explicit differentiation. You already know how to do explicit differentiation. We're going to do a different type called implicit differentiation. The difference between the two is whether you're dealing with an explicit function or an implicit function. What we're going to do in the beginning is talk about an example where we have a circle. A circle can be represented as an explicit function where I solve for y explicitly in terms of x, or a circle can be written as an implicit function, such as x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. That's an implicit function because I didn't solve for y explicitly in terms of x. That's the difference between explicit and implicit. Let me be more specific. Let's do an example. This is a circle of radius 3 centered at the origin. You might know the equation as x squared plus y squared is equal to 3 squared, or 9. This is what's known as the implicit form for the equation of the circle. The explicit form is obtained by solving for y in terms of x. The implicit form has an advantage in that you only need one equation to describe the circle. The explicit form has two equations the top being the positive square root of 9 minus x squared, and the bottom being the negative square root of 9 minus x squared. The implicit form is arguably simpler, because I only need one equation, and I don't need to worry about whether it's the positive or the negative square root. Because the y is squared, both are implicitly included in this single, shorter format. Our task is going to be to find the slope of the tangent line on a circle of radius 3 at the point negative 2 comma negative square root of 5. Since the point is on the bottom half of the circle, this is the equation that I'll need to take the derivative of. Remember that a square root is a one-half power. Writing it as a one-half power will make it a bit easier to take the derivative. Now taking the derivative using the chain rule, I start by taking the derivative of the outside function. Let's bring the one-half in front and then decrease the power by one. A half minus one is negative a half. Now I need to multiply times the derivative of the inside function. What is the derivative of 9 minus x squared? The derivative of 9 is 0, and then the derivative of negative x squared is minus 2x. So the negatives combine to give me a total of plus, and the 2's cancel out. Now let's take this negative 1 half power, and so that it looks nicer, let's put it in the denominator. Here's what we've got so far. The equation for the bottom half of the circle, and then the derivative of the bottom half of the circle. Now let's find the slope at the desired point by plugging in negative 2 into our derivative formula. We get negative 2 over the square root of 5. So the slope is negative 2 over square root of 5. Here's the result of our previous calculation. We're going to do the same problem a second time, and we're going to show that we're going to get the same answer using a new method called implicit differentiation. We do not solve for y in terms of x as the first step. We're going to keep the function in the implicit form. Now, it's true that y is a function of x, but we're not going to solve for it. This method will be very helpful if we couldn't solve for y in terms of x. Now, let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, meaning that x is our variable. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The second part is a composition of functions. There's a square on the outside, and then there's a function of x on the inside. So taking the derivative of the outside first, I get 2 times y by bringing the 2 down in front and then decreasing the power to 1. Now we have this inside function. Let's multiply times the derivative of the inside function. Okay, now the easiest part. What's the derivative of 9? Of course, that's 0. The next step is to solve for y prime. Moving stuff around in this equation, let's subtract 2x from both sides. Let's cancel the 2's on either side. Find out what y prime is equal to. So let's divide by y. So y prime is equal to negative x divided by y. Here's what we just found out. That the derivative on a circle derived from the implicit form with implicit differentiation is equal to negative x divided by y. In order to find the slope at negative 2 negative square root of 5, to plug in x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to negative square root of 5. I get that the slope is 2 over negative square root of 5. That's great news. That's the same exact answer I got with explicit differentiation. The implicit way works gives me that the slope is 2 over negative square root of 5. The explicit way also works. It 
it also gives me that the slope is negative 2 over square root of 5. Let's review the steps for each type of differentiation. The first step in explicit differentiation, normal differentiation, meaning the first type that we learned, is that you want to have y as a function of x in order to start the problem. Then you just take the derivative as usual using any derivative rules that we covered in class. If you're looking for the slope at x equals a, just plug in x equals a and you've got your slope. Implicit differentiation works a little different. In implicit differentiation, we no longer solve for y in terms of x. You can see that the first step is instead just leave the expression as it is and everywhere you see a y, replace it with a y of x. That way we think of y like being a function of x, even though it's not explicitly solved for. The next step is to take the derivative with respect to x. And every time you see one of these symbols, y of x, you're going to have to use the chain rule because the y of x is just like an inside function. So you need to use the chain rule each time one of these y of x symbols appears. The final step is to solve for y prime and then finally plug in any x y values that you're interested in to find the slope of the tangent at a particular point. The difference between implicit and explicit for the final step is that explicit you only need to plug in the x value into the derivative. For implicit you're going to need to plug in both the x and and the y into the derivative in order to find the slope of the tangent. Let's try another example. The equation we're going to look at is x squared plus y squared all squared is equal to 4xy. Now this is not an equation of a circle. This is a completely different shape. The shape is actually a figure eight. It looks something like this. This is a bit, bit of a rough sketch. And if I graph this with a computer, I'll find that the point right at the edge there is one comma one. You can see why implicit differentiation is used. Look at this equation. In order to solve for y, we would have to square this out and then try to solve a fourth degree polynomial for y. This is not an easy task, so we use implicit differentiation because it's too hard to solve for y in terms of x. Remember the first step is everywhere I see a y, I'm gonna replace it with y of x. This is to help me visualize that y is a function of x, it's just too hard to find at the moment. Now we're gonna take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, so x is my variable. The outermost function on the left is the outermost square. Let's do the derivative of that outermost part first. We'll bring the two down, decrease the power to one, and then remember that you should just copy down the inside function. And then afterwards, we're gonna multiply times the derivative of the inside function. But at this stage, you just copy it down. You do the outer part, bring down the two, and then reduce it to one, and then just take the inner part and copy it down down here. Now I'm gonna multiply times the derivative of the inside function. Derivative of x squared plus y of x squared. The derivative of x squared is two x. Now the derivative of this part is a chain rule. This is the new part with implicit differentiation. I'm gonna bring the two down in front. That'll be the derivative of the outside function, I need to multiply times the derivative of the inside. Here the inside function is y of x. The derivative of the inside function is y prime. Let's take the derivative of the right hand side. The right hand side is a product. I can think of it like 4x times y of x. Let's use the product rule. 1d2 plus 2d1. The first function is 4x. 1d2, the derivative of the second function is y prime. This is my 1d2 plus 2d1. Here is my 2. My second function is y here times the derivative of the first part, which is 4. Now my derivative is done. So what's the slope of the tangent line? Remember, the slope of the tangent line is y prime. y prime of x, that's the slope of the tangent line. We got to solve for y prime. Let's notice that there's a bunch of 2's in here, an extra 2 on the outside, and then some 4's on the right. So let's factor out a 2 from this inner part, combine it with this 2, and then cancel 4 on both sides. In order to make things a bit simpler, I'm just going to start writing y. Here I'll just write y prime because it's a bit shorter. Remember I can multiply in any order so I can bring these two twos together for a total of four and divide by four on both sides. For the remaining quantity on the left, we can just FOIL it out. x squared plus y squared times x and x squared plus y squared times y y prime. Now as we go along, I'm gonna tell you some little tricks. Remember that my goal is to solve for y prime. So any term that has a y prime in it, 
I'm going to collect together on the left side of the equation. Anything that doesn't have a y prime in it, I'm going to move over to the right side of the equation. I don't need to foil out this term. I can just bring it as a whole chunk onto the right hand side. Because there's no y prime to separate out in this term, I don't need to foil it. I'm going to make some indications as to what I'm doing on each step. This I'm going to keep on the left hand side. This other term that has a y prime in it, let's subtract it from both sides. So I'm going to move it to the left side of the equation, subtracting it from the left side. When I subtract it from the right side, it cancels with the existing term. Now the remaining pieces is this y, which is still hanging out on the right side, and then this piece over here, which I want to move to the right side of the equation by subtracting it on both sides. Okay, we're almost there. Now a key part in every implicit differentiation problem is that once you have the y primes together on one side of the equation, factor out a y prime in order to solve for y prime. Now on the left, I'm going to factor y prime out of the first piece, factor y prime out of the second piece, and the right can just stay as is. What's the final step? How do I solve for y prime? You guessed it. What I need to do is divide by this quantity here, the red and the pink. If I just divide by this stuff inside the parentheses, I'll have y prime is equal to my expression for the slope. Let's finish the computation. The slope of the tangent line at any point on on my figure 8 is equal to this right hand expression all divided by the expression from the left piece. This formula gives the slope of the tangent lines on the figure 8. So here's our result. In order to find the slope at 1 comma 1, I need to plug in x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 into my slope expression. Doing this, you can add this stuff up and I get negative 1. The slope of this red tangent line is negative 1. There are so many cool shapes that come from implicit equations. This one's called a cardioid. This one's a three-leaf clover. This is a sideways ellipse. This one is called an asteroid. And this one is some sort of loop within a loop type shape. Now you know how to find the slope of the tangent line on any of these curves. Now you can take derivatives on curves even if you don't know how to solve for y in terms of x. We're going to do some more examples in class. We'll see you then.